when they talk on these platforms and the fan is asking for a photo and, you know, the, the Filipino worker is like, you know, trying to tease them into the photo. It's actually a guy <laughs> teasing them. And then they're like sending them and they're like, yo, do you like my photo? And there's like a huge market for it. Like, people are willing to pay like, you know, great prices for this kind of, you know, what they think is exclusive content. I was an influencer before as well, too. Engaging with a fan, like it's it could be operational if you make it operational, which these Filipino workers like kind of like do. But like for us, it's like, because of my understanding of it and like me interacting with fans, I know that like, you know, you have to build a personal relationship with them. And we also fine tune a lot of our models. We're building on those responses to be more engaging, more emotive, better, depending on who they want. Some of our fans, like they, they really like our platform and not just like, like to talk to a specific influencer, but also just talk to somebody and get a, a personal response back. And in terms of the dopamine addiction, we have seen users who just won't leave our platform, <laughs> driving the cost of our company high up. <laughs> and for those like, you know, we, we sometimes like when we like find it like kind of like alarming or like, you know, when we just look at the data overall, we're like, okay, maybe we want to like slow down this conversation and make sure like they're not like super addicted to it. Welcome to Autopilot, a podcast where we discuss the past, present and future of AI and automation. We explore how AI is creating and disrupting large industries in conversations with top founders, investors, and historians. I'm your host, Will Summerlin. Let's dive in. Maggie, thank you for joining us on the Autopilot podcast. So today we're going to talk about the creator economy, the opportunity for AI, and what the future of social media looks like. But before we dive into that, let's start with you. Can you take one minute and just tell everybody who you are and what you're building? Yeah, of course. I'm Maggie. I'm the CEO and co-founder of My Companions, which is an AI-enabled creator economy company. So I started off as an influencer about like 10 years ago, and I've just seen a lot of pain points that influencers go through with like, you know, really being hard to like for me to engage with all my fans. And like also like, you know, monetization was like, you know, very like finicky with with um, the Instagram features. Um, and so I decided to like, you know, start a company and leveraging AI technology to kind of automate a lot of these manual processes that lie within it. And yeah, like um, I actually like stopped being an influencer a few years ago um, due to a lot of like, you know, safety issues. It like really like hits home to me. Like when I like create this company, I've always had like the influencers like, you know, best of heart and like, you know, safety is always like a priority for me. And so, um, yeah, so we created our first product, which is we make Telegram bots, a companion bots of influencers on social media where their fans can pay to chat and like get exclusive photos and videos of and also hear their voice, which is something the fans may not have had this opportunity in the past. And so we currently work with about like 20 influencers um, spanning many different like industries and different types of influencers. So we have like foodie racks, we have um, just like lifestyle influencers, DJs, entrepreneurs, um, models. So there's a wide range of people we work with and we really hope to work with more. Um, and also on the side, we're also creating this new like AI chatter that's meant to, is meant for like OnlyFans and Patreon um, agencies and creators to automate a lot of their um, manner process, such as like um, helping come up with messages and responses, monetize. And like, so we, we're kind of using that same technology we have used and like fine tuned in the last six months for like my first product into this one. So yeah, we're hoping to really expand there and um, expand in different platforms and like really be like the premier like um, AI and co-pilot for influencers everywhere. That's great. And I, I know almost nothing about the creator economy. I've spent most of my investing career focused on enterprise software and the application of AI to industrial sectors and other things that are much more B2B focused. With that said, I'm a consumer of creator content, right? I have an Instagram and spend a lot of time on Twitter. So can you give us just like the one-on-one topography of what the creator economy looks like? Yeah, it's a massive market. Like we, there's going to be like a lot of like companies and like we just see it like rise. So I think it's like the creator com- economy company embodies like not just like, you know, influencers, but also like Lincoln Bio companies, like influencer agencies. And it's going to be like increasing as like, you know, we see it as like one of the biggest like areas where people want to be like a solo entrepreneur on. And we're we also like read a stat that like one out of four like Gen Z people like want to be a creator. But I think AI can automate a lot of that. So I think it's going to change the way influencers and like their fans have these relationships and also like how brands advertise on social media. We also see like a rise of AI influencers, like their photos, videos, audios and songs are all AI generated. So it's very, very exciting place to be at. 
Yeah, the stat of one in four is crazy. I, I saw uh, sort of parallel interviews, interviewing kids and asking them what they wanted to be when they grew up. And if you go back to like the 1980s or 1970s or even the 90s, you know, people said, I want to be a president or I want to be an astronaut or I want to be an engineer. And now most kids say, I want to be a creator. I want to be famous on YouTube or TikTok. Mm-hmm. And so it's been an incredible shift in, in sort of the trajectory of what people see as success. And it seems like the creator economy has shifted a little bit. If we look at social media 1.0, it was very much one way mm-hmm. where people created content on YouTube or on Instagram and others consume that content. It seems like we've started to see that become more two-way and interactive. And I think OnlyFans seems like one of the catalysts for this, right? Where the creators on that platform want to chat with their fans. When did that sort of two-way communication start and how has it evolved over the last couple of years? Yeah, you're, I think like parasocial like relationships has always like been a thing, um, even like dating back to the days of television where like, you know, people would just like, it's like a one way um, relationship there and how it's it's evolved. It's, um, you know, just like the, these social media platforms given the capability for people to like interact with their favorite influencer. And like, yeah, for example, like Instagram, OnlyFans and Patreon and all these big platforms, people are able to message them, comment. But a lot of these are like, you know, manually done by creators and influencers for the smaller ones. But like the larger ones actually leverage like agencies um, and like also like labor from like, you know, the um, Philippines or other outsourced like areas to interact with their fans on a one on one basis. Sometimes like these agencies or outsourced labor don't actually represent the influencer well or like they have like, you know, there's like quality issues with it. So I think AI could actually replace like a lot of this um, work and make it lower cost and also higher quality for the in, uh, influencer and agency to use um, so that um, the fan feels more connected to the influencer. And also like the influencer is able to spend more time on content ideation instead of just like manually messaging or like making sure like this quality is like up to par and stuff. And in terms of like, you know, safety is a huge like thing, of course, like when it comes to um, social media and everything. And yeah, like I think that like, you know, with these like AI and like these like safety guardrails that all these companies are like trying to make a safer place for our younger generation to be a part of. I'm very hopeful that like, you know, as long as, as we're getting more information and like learning more about like, you know, what's like, what can be detrimental for like someone's mental health or like, you know, just detrimental to like someone's like physical, like well-being, AI would help a lot with putting that together and like making sure the influencer and fans have like a safe conversation. And if, if their interactions are very like, you know, like appropriate and like safe and, and reflects the influencer well. And I think AI will help a lot with that. One of the things you shared with me, which I found really interesting and surprising, uh, On OnlyFans in particular, when a lot of creators are communicating with their fans and vice versa, the fans not actually talking to the creator, they're talking to somebody in the Philippines or another country that's that's outsourced. Can you talk us through that? Like what what is that what does that actually look like? Uh, at, at, at scale? Yeah, so OnlyFans is actually like a, a great platform to have someone else log into your account with. They have like very, um, very easy security. Like, you know, they basically, like anyone can log into your account at any point, like at any country. <laughs> and so given that, like that doesn't have the safe like security parameters as like Facebook and like Instagram does. Um, and so given that, like a lot of these like OnlyFans uh, models or creators, um, they actually like fall under these like big agencies. And I think there's like only like a few of them like in North America and that they're like big whales that kind of hold most of the like, OnlyFans creators. And so they work with these models. They help them create their presence on OnlyFans and they tell them like what exactly they need. And then they also like hire these like Filipino workers for as little as like two dollars an hour um, to service these fans. So basically, like these fans will be talking to the you know inf- influencer and only fans, but don't really realize it's actually like a guy in the Philippines, you know, servicing them. And they're like paying per message. And like in 2022, there's a stat that said that like only fans had a 5.6 gross in transactions. 5.6 billion. Yes, yes. 5.6 billion gross in transactions. And so that's huge. You know, it's it's really crazy how a lot of this was just serviced by <laughs> like, you know, not the creator themselves. Another stat I saw was that, like most of these creators actually don't make money. So like agencies actually like kind of dominate in OnlyFans, you know, using AI, <laughs> we can replace a lot of this manual work. And also the hours of these Filipino workers like kind of like cater to something in between US and Philippines. And so a lot of people also notice that like, oh, it's interesting how my messages are like in that time zone, like are like a lot faster in specific time zones. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> these like Filipino workers, like, you know, they're great at like, you know, continuing the conversations, like getting money that way. 
what we're trying to do at My Companions is we want to create an AI chatter that kind of augments the workforce here. And we want to help them um, help these agencies and agents as like a first round to automate creating that message that's very engaging. Um, it's uh, helps, you know, like detect like propensity to monetize. Um, and it's like, you know, builds a connection and like it continues the conversation, you know, great grammar, um, something we actually don't really see when we're, you know, just like trying, like looking at the data from like these like other agencies. Like I just really believe that there's just like a huge market here. It's, um, you know, through like OnlyFans, um, like with AI, like automating a lot of these like service like work um, that will actually like probably will resonate better with the fans as well too. How much do people pay per message to chat with somebody in the Philippines who they think is a an OnlyFans creator? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I think it depends on the I think it depends on the creator itself. It's just it's just so funny. People assume <laughs> that they're talking to to a creator, but they're talking to somebody. Yeah, some guy in the Philippines. Yeah, and it's yeah, and it's, so it's not just like messages, but it's also like photo send as well too. So when you know when they talk on these platforms and the the fan is asking for a photo, and you know the the Filipino worker is like you know trying to tease them into the photo, it's actually a guy <laughs> teasing them, and then they're like sending them, and they're like, yo, do you like my photo? Or like, what do you think? Like, want another one, right? Like, and there's like a huge market for it. like you know people are willing to pay like you know great prices for this kind of like you know what they think is exclusive content. In a way, it's kind of like mental masturbation, right? It's so funny, and it's not like a new case 5.6 billion dollars in gross revenue off of this is is a is a, is a very large market I, i'm curious so the opportunity for you guys is to essentially replace or augment the filipino workers with ai so if a if a fan is talking to the creator they're actually talking to an ai bot as opposed to a human is that correct yes yeah basically it will automate like sending messages creating that message and also asking for tips the second phase would be like everything's automated. You can run this on like, you know, different browsers. Currently, our current product where we have like about like 20 influencers on, like it's on Telegram and it does say bot at the end. So like the fans do know that they're talking to a bot. And also like when the influencers launch, they typically talk about like, oh, like I just launched like a new AI bot. Like talk to me. It, it emulates like the influencers personality and their voice and like their content and also has like safety guardrails and what topics the influencer wants to engage with. Through Telegram, like we're also able to send them photos, videos, any message they want to hear, like whether it's like, you know, a voice or text. So there's like different modes there. I think like Telegram is a great like platform we started off with because one, it's easy to like start with, um, you know, in integrates well with like other platforms and, you know, like for example, like payments and everything, but also it's, um, you know, it has a like high stickiness, right? Like, so like people already have Telegram. It's on your phone or even on desktop and browser. <laughs> we see like, you know, very high stickiness with the product and, you know, people come and chat with their bot of choice. So yeah, like it actually like feels like you're talking to the person, um, even though it says bot at the end of the name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, it seems more ethical to let the person know that they're not actually talking to the creator. Yeah, so just to be clear, like we are a co-pilot, so like the mm -hmm. influencers can zoom in and zoom out of conversations like anytime they want. Um, so, but the AI kind of helps, like you know, just like automate, like you know, that like immediate response. Um, so, so the so the fan feels like they're getting responded to when it's reliable. It's always there for you twenty four seven. <laughs> um, but yeah, the influencers, like some of our influencers, are very like involved with like you know what's coming in. Like, how do I learn more about my fans? And they love how like the AI just responds for them, so they don't have to do the work. And like they also get to know more about like what their fans like. So you know they are able to see like which photos are being sent, and they're also able to like like kind of develop more content in that kind of way. Um, and also like, you know, like monetize monetization, right? So um, yeah, like, you know, these like fans, they definitely see like their con like, these influencers content like on their Instagram or TikTok or whatever platform they're on or OnlyFans, whatever they're on. The thing about like our product is that like, you know, it's the delivery and the experience they receive is, you know, it's like a real conversation. It's emotive. It's, um, it feels like you're talking to a real person. Um, especially with the voice. We see a lot of companies um, like, you know, like Character AI, Replica, they, you know, they have like adaptations of like, you know, characters, um, you know, which is also great too. Like, I mean, there's a lot of fans for these like, you know, characters on like movies and everything. But for us, like we like focus on influencers because, and like influencers who have like a following for a very long time, who like, you know, have fans who like have like watched them like, you know, grow and like, live through life and everything and like they're finally able to talk to them you know and, and also like the influencers can share exclusive content to their fans um and yeah there's like you know 
parameters of how they want to share that as well too but it depends like on which fans they want to share it to what kind of kind of conversation mm-hmm. they're having it seems like the primary advantages of using ai for this over outsourced human labor are cost and the quality of the messages so you mentioned like grammar is an issue when you're outsourcing to the philippines uh, are, are, are those the two primary advantages or are there others that I'm, I'm missing? The two major ones is higher quality and lower cost. So lower cost is like, you know, we can replace like agency employees, um, HR, like all those like processes that come in with a company, like payroll, et cetera, like and just use ours. And it's going to be like a credit based system mm-hmm. in terms of quality. Like, yeah, like I think it's not it's not just grammar, but it's also like, you know, consistency and delivery. So like we can also time the responses more reasonable time where it emulates like a real person. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, our Telegram bots are all like probably set to like, you know, just like om- almost like within like three to five seconds ish. Um, but like, you know, we can we can tailor that depending on like what kind of experience the influencer wants. Um, and also like monetization. So we see that like, um, you know, a lot of Filipino workers, again, like they're really good at continuing the conversation. You know, for us, it's like we also like see are able to detect like high propensity to pay and we have like t- escalation processes in play. So it's things like that where we feel like we just have like a higher like quality with. I was an influencer before as well, too. And like I, I know that like, you know, engaging with a fan, like it's it could be operational if you make it operational, which these Filipino workers do. But like for us, it's like because of my understanding of it and like me interacting with fans like first uh, first basis, like I know that like, you know, you have to build a personal relationship with them. We also fine tune a lot of our model as well, too. So we like as we learn more and more conversations with an influencer, we also like make sure like we're building on those responses to be more engaging, more emotive, better, depending on who they want. So I think we kind of like, you know, are not just an operational AI thing. We also like aim to be like an AI with emotion and like a real, like really emulating a real person. I think those are like the two like major like things. Yeah, it it seems like there's a huge opportunity around optimization and like optimizing both continuing the conversation, but also monetizing sort of per message. If you think about the way that slot machines work, right? Like they're designed to keep people engaged and continue putting money in it. You think about social media, right? The way that Instagram or TikTok is, is designed. It's designed to optimize continued engagement, right? Keep people watching. And it seems like there's a huge opportunity here for, for that same thing. Okay, so slot machine, like great thing you said just now. Um, so yeah, like I think like for our, like some for some of our CTAs, like on our like Telegram platform, it's like, oh, get a photo, get a special lucky photo. Sure. Um, and yeah, like, you know, their fans like love that excitement. You know, it's like, ooh, like I'm gonna like, you know, get like a really cool photo today or like it's something different. Um, yeah, so and you get like a dopamine hit, which continues to drive engagement, just like a slot machine, right? If you if you pull it and you get five dollars back out of a dollar entry, you're like, oh, I won money. I'm going to keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we really try to gamify our like platform as well too. So like we also introduce like this thing called like role play, where you can like role play a scenario with your influencer. So um, yeah, so like for one of our influencers, we have like role playing like a dinner and sushi, and then um, watch a horror movie after, and like that our model is able to like actually like walk through the experience like step by step like oh we're gonna get seated and like yeah. i drive you i pick you up we're gonna get seated and i pour you a glass of water you know like that kind of stuff and so yeah i think like you know just like these like kind of features we have on our platform like help gamify the mm-hmm. system and it it makes like fans very like oh this is like very fun to do it's not just like chatting how are you like get to know you but it's also like you can actually like go on um, you know, virtual or mental um, adventures with this influencer. And there's also like photos and videos you can see of the influencer like doing these specific things as well too. And I think the future of this would also be like, you know, AI generated photos and videos where imagine any scenario like the fan wants to imagine with or like as, at the, as a role playing, you can actually like see it happen and we are like going to be that platform to deliver that experience for the fan to like, you know, live out whatever they want to live out. Of, of course, like, you know, on parameters, whatever the influencer is, is okay with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things that's interesting now that you have is voice. And so if you're comparing what you guys have to, to the traditional outsource to the Philippine model, uh, obviously they don't have voice capabilities because you don't want a Filipino guy recording the message and sending it as a, as a, <laughs> as a creator. Uh, how how has voice been an important channel for you guys or an important medium? Has that driven more engagement than text? Yeah, that's that's what we definitely see. Voice is definitely more engaging than text because it actually it's yeah. So it's like something like you know very personable and it's like it feels like the person's talking to you. Yeah, so I think like you know even a step 
further against that is going to be video. Like, you know, imagine the person just for like a, maybe an AI generated video of the person talking to you. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, we see voice definitely being more, a lot more engaging than text. Uh, we offer both because, you know, as sometimes like, you know, people are at work and they don't want like to hear the voice. So we, we sometimes for sure. some influencers, we have like the node switch, yeah. um, whether they want text only or a combination or just like voice. But yeah, like I, um, like people love the voice, and like sometimes like people ask like, oh, can this influencer like say these specific phrases to me? And like yeah. I, I just want to hear like that. So yeah, I, I think like a lot of people love that like feature of it. Do you like voice better? <laughs> I mean, I think voice in general is a is a more emotive medium because it's what humans have evolved to to respond to over thousands of years, right? Whereas text is not a new thing, right? We've had text for thousands of years as well. But as a way to communicate between people, yeah. um, it seems like voice is a is a more emotive medium, yeah. and more it's closer to being in person versus you know just a, a pure text. And like if I'm you know talking to a friend, like it's always or talking to my family, like I'd always prefer to call them versus send them a text. True. Yeah. Exactly. Like there's like something about like their tone of their voice, like maybe a slight accent or accent they have that's like very unique, and like it's like we remember that. And yeah, like, so like, we love how our voice capability, um, we, we use a voice generation software as well too. And we, you know, help the influencer, like, you know, create that voice AI with us. Um, and like by reading a script, it's really cool because we work with influencers with, with many different accents um, and like different like tones and like, you know, speaking styles, like, you know, specific pauses here and there and like speed as well too. So we have every influencer has their own unique voice. And like, I think the fans also really like, you know, jumping from different bots to just like try out like the different voices and like hearing these influencers like above of just like, you know, photos they see on Instagram because some of our influencers on Instagram, like they're, they're like, they just do photos only. And they have like a big following off that. And like, yeah, like being able to hear like their voice, like really gets fans very excited too. And even like having a real conversation that's like personalized, tailored, if he was one-on-one, like yeah. that's, yeah, that's like what like fans like come for to us for. How good is the, is the voice technology today? Like you mentioned, you have creators with a lot of different accents. Yeah. How, is it almost imperceptible or does it still have some ways to go before it's close to perfect. <laughs> so it really depends on which accent it is. Mm -hmm. um, so we use Eleven Labs, which is a great software. Um, and they it depends on their training data. So like they train on a lot of like accents that I think are more more, more Western. Mm -hmm. For some other influencers like who don't have the, the specific accent in their data training data set, like they do need to record more time and we and stress the accents and stress the words and their tonality more extreme in the scripts like they record. I think for some like there's like been a one on one like and they're like very impressed. It was like a replica of their voice with Eleven Labs like and all these like new like voice generation uh, softwares. And we're always looking for new ones too to like use and like see what's better. Um, we can even like do something where it's like if a certain platform caters to specific accents, we will use that one over another one. And we're okay doing that. We like, you know, use different LLMs depending on like, you know, what kind of bot they want anyways. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited um, for this like voice generation to, you know, encompass all accents and like make it very easy like for anyone and everyone to like even have like their own like voice gen AI. Yeah. And if we're double clicking on the technology side for a second, mm -hmm. I'm curious, I, I would imagine that the commercial open source models restrict what they're allowed to say, right? Like you can't have, if you're having a conversation with an OnlyFans model, I would assume it's more graphic than say, you know, a conversation with, with ChatGPT. And I would assume the commercial labs like OpenAI restrict the output of, of graphic content. Is that correct? And if so, how do you guys, how do you guys navigate that? Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of guardrails in a lot of these LLMs. So we actually use multiple ones depending on what kind of bot we have. Um, and so, yes, a lot of our influencers are not actually okay with the graphic, um, you know, words anyways. And mm -hmm. we also have like some professional and friendly bots as well too. And so they are ma mainly on chat GPT. Um, but like for the ones that like kind of allow it, we also have our own LLM model on top of like what we use. And so that embodies like, you know, different ones like Mistro, for example, we, mm -hmm. we experiment with all a few of them. We like serve as like that middleware layer um, between LLMs and also like the influencer itself. We put in content there. We like tune it, our, we tune it ourselves. Every model we have is not just a standard GP, GPT-4 because GPT-4, in our opinion, is kind of static and not as like emotive. Yeah. Um, and I think classic LLMs are just not meant to be like 
provoke a lot of emotion. They're not like meant to like monetize and be like super engaging with and personable, charismatic. And so we have to actually add that ourselves. To add emotion and, and humanity to the, the output. My co-founder, he's an AI genius with a PhD and he's like, you know, he works on this stuff. Like he, he basically created this whole like model himself on top of all these like different LMs we, we use. It's very unique. And I, I think it's our tech moat where like we, we, um, have like a very unique data, proprietary data set that like others may not have with because we trained it for the last like six months and that's when my company started <laughs> um and uh yeah we like we have the we are very knowledgeable about these interactions on what people want and what gets people to like you know pay um what gets people to like come back like we have like you know retargeting we have a whole system built on this we like learn to really understand the different types of customers we have different cohorts timing and yeah some of the stuff i also want to do in the future would be like you know self-love again like these all take a lot of time to do um but that's in my like roadmap i'm just really personally invested in that stuff as well too and also like with this only fans integration that i was like uh, referring to earlier like i think like there can be a lot more data we can use and like just like to make this like take this to the next level yeah absolutely and one of the uh, one of the questions i have is is around the future of of creators if ai gets good enough to essentially replace creators like if people can create an ai girlfriend um, and the technology is good enough that they can completely define the personality they can generate synthetic images synthetic voice synthetic video does that pose a challenge for creators or do you think that you'll still have a human at the core right an actual human and you're going to have kind of an ai girlfriend modeled around that human like what, what, what is that going to look like five years from now? <laughs> that, that's a great question. And there's a lot of big AI influencers now. Like I think they're, I, I forgot the name, a little more, I, I don't want to mispronounce it, but she has like 3 million followers already. Um, and like, you know, like high engagement there and everything. So um, yeah, we're like definitely seeing that rise happen already. Also like within our own company, we also have like our own like AI influencer that's like really not marketed, but it was just like more experimental for us. I think the future would actually be like an AI influencer because like the AI will know so much about like, you know, just like working off like a huge data set. Like an AI is meant to like, you know, I well not meant to, but like it can solve problems that humans cannot. And so like with that being said, like if we use the technology correctly, um, and we like make this influencer that kind of like caters to like things that we cannot even imagine ourselves, then I, I think that could be like a really big thing. And it probably will start off as like a human at the core kind of thing, but like eventually, like I think people will really like the AI influencers and people are, are already adapting to like AI and like, you know, talking to bots and stuff, which was probably probably like laughed at like a few yeah. years ago, right? So we're already seeing that like a shift that way. Let's just say like an influencer just like leveraging AI to like automate a lot of their services and manual processes from the beginning. Like I feel like in the future, like, you know, the people would just like listen to these AI influencers because they, they know them so well and they're able to tailor and personalize the message you want to send. And yeah, in terms of like, you know, brand deals and like advertisers, like, you know, they, they want to be able to like, you know, talk, speak to the audience. With AI, we can also like personalize that message to the person based on their conversation they're having. And it enables scale, right? If, if we really are in the second wave of social media where it's interactive and communications are two-way, if you're a creator and you have 10 million fans, there's no way you can by yourself communicate with all 10 million fans. And so if you're going to succeed in this sort of world of two-way communication, social media, you, you have to have some level of automation. Exactly. Especially with, you know, AI generated photos, videos, and content, mm -hmm. um, you know, providing that on a consistent basis and like enough um, so then like the person feels connected to you, like all that, like AI can like help with that. And even negotiating brand deals too. Like we also see the future in AI with that. I mean, a lot of like companies come up to me and they give me like, you know, different prices for, um, you know, different media. So like, oh, we do a story post for this amount of money and I get another one that's similar company with like a very different range. And so like, I think like a lot of companies like still struggle with that, like not knowing the right price. Um, for things and also the influencer also like especially new ones like they don't know like how much they should charge uh for something so yeah i think like ai could also like uh, negotiate a lot of that like contracts um you know do the scheduling when they should like post something or like let it out like the time of day and like a lot of these things could be really automated and um ai will like help with just like knowing when and looking at like big data sets of their users and fans and engagement to like see like when is the optimal time to do certain specific things and how to do it in a way that would get the most engagement on these platforms and kind of like hacking the algorithm 
that I think a lot of influencers don't have a lot of clarity on given, you know, it's like controlled by big media and like they have a lot of tests running all the time and it's just really unpredictable at times. Yeah, yeah that, that makes total sense. Maybe we can talk about like augmented reality and virtual reality for a second. I, I don't know if you've tried the, the Apple Apple headset. Um, have you? I have not. Okay. <laughs> but I heard it, of, I heard great things about it. <laughs> it's it's uncanny. If you put it on, it's not perfect. But for example, they have a scene where you're in Yosemite in the snowfall and, and you look around and, and it feels like you're there. If you spend enough time in it, you almost like can sense like snow crunching under your feet. It's, it's really crazy. And I would imagine if we fast forward five, seven, ten years, you're going to be able to create scenes where you're at a sushi restaurant with a date, for example. And um, I'm curious how you think that's going to play into this sort of AI social media strategy. Do you think we're going to get to a point where using a platform, your platform or, or technology like you have on your platform, fans will be able to literally like create uh, a story, say, hey, I want to take this this influencer on a date to a sushi restaurant and wearing the headset, they sort of feel almost imperceptibly like they're at the sushi restaurant with this influencer. Do you, do you think that's somewhere on the on the horizon? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the fans themselves. Um, yes, if they have that technology and like, yeah, but like we would definitely love to like, you know, create these more personal experiences with the, their fans leveraging AI. And I think we're taking the right steps in that direction, you know, looking at like photos and videos AI generated and like trying to have the fan think that they're, they're with them with these videos um, that yeah. are like, catered to like what they were chatting on, like what they want to role play and like what they want to do. I, I definitely think like augmented reality and virtual reality is like, you know, it, I don't know if it's going to be the, like the hundred percent, like what everyone wants, but like for a subset of people who are really into that stuff, I, I think it would be a very immersive and great experience. And there's definitely going to be a market there. Like we see the rise of virtual meetings and like, it's like evolved from like calls, right? Like it's from yeah. calls to virtual meetings, it's like, for example, like Zoom and stuff. And then like, now, like, you know, Zuckerberg was like, oh, I want to have meetings in the metaverse. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that that's going to be a future and, and not just for influencers, but also anyone we have a relationship with. I, I can just only imagine like a fan being like, oh, I just want to like go to this vacation with my influencer. And instead of just like typing it on our platform like that we have now on my companions, they can just have the experience themselves and we'll be happy to deliver that. <laughs> yeah, it, it make, makes total sense. If we could shift a little bit to talk about the mental health aspect of all this. I think there are two arguments, one that says this is going to be good for mental health, the other that says it's going to be bad. Mm. On one end, you know, humans, most humans are probably addicted to social media to some degree. And it seems like the better technology gets and the more interactive it gets, the more addicting it's going to become. Uh, and I think the argument against that is that it's, you know, it's going to drain people's time and people are going to get oversaturated with dopamine and sort of become numb and null. And you've seen a little bit of that as a result of social media. The other argument is that this is going to fix loneliness. And there, there is a loneliness, loneliness epidemic in America, and I'm sure it's in other countries as well. Where, where on that spectrum do you fall? Do you think this is going to be like a net positive or a net negative for mental health? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I, I think it's going to be a net positive for mental health because, yeah, I think like loneliness is a real like pandemic. And I, I think like I read somewhere where like the lo- like people feel more lonely than ever before. Some of our fans, like they, they really like our platform and not just like, like to talk to a specific influencer, but also just talk to somebody and get a, a personal response back. And in terms of the dopamine addiction, like, yeah, we have seen users who just won't leave our platform <laughs> and, uh, you know, driving the cost of our company high up. <laughs> we like find it kind of alarming or, you know, when we just look at the data overall, we're like, okay, maybe we want to slow down this conversation and make sure they're not super addicted to it. Um, because yeah, like I think like people can get addicted to something like this, but we always try to make sure our like conversations are very positive. So like the AI is actually trained that if things go a negative way, it's a very, like we respond in a very uplifting, like let's change the topic or like, let's like talk more about that. Like in a way it's not, it's not like medically like therapy or anything. And we have seen some messages that were about suicide or like, you know, something more alarming. And the AI is also trained to like know how to like, you know, respond to these uh, messages in like a very like helpful way like oh call this hotline like you know get help I really like my platform I, I think it's great for it's better for mental health in my opinion I think people can argue like everything can be good or bad for mental health right we see like you know social media influencers and like just like fans like you know there's a lot of negativity on you know these platforms and Instagram tries to filter out these like hateful and spam content we don't filter it out because we we get the message but like we like try to move the conversation to like a more helpful and like the right appropriate way. 
yeah. just if you zoom out and look at kind of what's happened over the last 10 years in social media, when it's one way and people are just consuming content, like I, I'm not a psychologist, so I'm just <laughs> guessing. I can totally understand how that would cause feelings of isolation, right? You see other people having fun and you're stuck at home and you're like, wow, this sucks. I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. But if it moves to two way and you're actually interacting with someone or an AI bot that you know, personifies someone, like it, it feels like it would be less lonely than the, 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 the alternative, which is just consuming one way content. Mm -hmm. And I think you made a great point, which is if you like, Right now, obviously, uh, one of the big use cases is is essentially porn, right? Like the, the the OnlyFans, which is the way that the arc of technology always follows, right? If you look at the early internet, like the early use cases and most of the adoption was porn and gambling. And it's like not surprising that it's the same thing in AI. But if you move beyond that and you look at like the other opportunities, like you mentioned having, you know, a coach or a therapist or, uh, you know, a, 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 a name any persona that, that, that can really help you and make you feel less lonely, like... It seems like that'll be a net positive rather than a net negative. Maggie, thank you so much for joining us today. If people want to follow your journey, where can they find you? And if an influencer or creator is listening and they want to learn more about your platform, where should they go? Yeah, they can go on mycompanions.ai. Uh, that's my website. Or they can even like follow me on Instagram, uh, Maggie E. Sin. M A G G I E E S I N. Um, I post a lot of like you know work related things there, um, announcements, and also like it's also linked to my my company name as well too. So. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you, Maggie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Autopilot Podcast. If you're using AI to create or disrupt a large industry, I would love to learn more about your story. Drop me a line on Twitter or go to our website, apv.vc. If you want to support the show, the best ways are to leave a review wherever you're listening and subscribe. The Autopilot Podcast is part of Turpentine, the podcast network behind Moment of Zen, Turpentine VC, Age of Miracles, and more shows for experts by experts in tech.